Welcome back. In this video, we're going over what is the S Corporation and how does it save me taxes? Whether you've already elected S Corp status, but just still find yourself confused, or you've heard about saving taxes and like a good business owner, you wanna save taxes too. This video will super simplify and clarify exactly what the S Corporation is and how it saves taxes so that you can know that it's the right fit for you and that what you're doing is correct. If you like this video, it's a clip from a free workshop I did the other day called Six biggest mistakes that business owners make when trying to save taxes with the S Corp. And you can watch the entire training for free by clicking the link either around me or in the description box down below this video. I look forward to helping you super simplify these areas of taxes. Before we jump in, if you're new here, my name's Amanda and you're watching the Business Finance Coach on YouTube where I simplify all the complexities of business to help you succeed, including accounting, taxes, and legality. I'm the creator of the Master Your Accounting and Taxes program, which guides business owners through tracking their own finances in unique spreadsheet templates that replace accounting software like QuickBooks. So the Master Your Accounting and Taxes program allows you to have everything you need to make tax times a breeze and be sure that you have everything you need to save the most taxes and have what you need for an IRS audit, as well as paying your quarterly estimated taxes as you go throughout the year. If you're interested in that program, be sure to check out the links down in the description box below this video. Now let's jump in and learn about what is the S Corporation in simple terms and how does it save us taxes? So let's jump in with our first learning tip because we can't talk about the six mistakes until we talk about what is the S Corporation. So this is a cheat sheet from one of my courses that simplifies business types. On the left hand side, you can see that the title is legal business types. And below that we have five. We have the sole proprietor, which is a default type of business. And then we have four other types that are separate business entities, the LLC, partnership, corporation, and nonprofit. So all of these legal types of businesses are created under a state law. Generally, you wanna form your business in the state that you operate in. Now you might have heard of additional business types, but these are the ones that people actually use because until a business type really takes off in popularity, it's not gonna be commonly used because no one knows what's gonna happen when someone takes that business to court or when the IRS challenges the business for taxes. So you set up your legal business under state law. The first one, sole proprietor, is not a separate business. That just means you started working yourself and you didn't form one of these other types of businesses. Now, the second type of business is our tax business type on the right side. And another way to say that is how the business is taxed at the IRS. Now you can see for each legal type, there's a tax type. But at the very bottom, you can see there is the S corporation and that's not attached to any legal type of business. And so the S corporation, what is the S corporation? It's a tax election that you set up at the IRS. So when you say you have an S corp, you also should have one of these entity types on the left. When it comes to legality and accounting, you need to also know what this legal type of business is. Um, whereas the S Corp is just an election to be taxed that way at the IRS. How do you know or find this? So this is something that you had to file with a state. Um, you would have actually filed paperwork with someone or paid a fee to someone. Now there are companies like LegalZoom that let you, and you're better off to do it yourself with the state, but um, you would have actually filed paperwork with someone or paid a fee to someone. And, and, and you can also find this information by going to your state. You can search your state name, business, look up 
and you can search your business name and see if you're set up with the state. You don't have to be an LLC to be an S car. Correct. You do not know any of the legal uh, separate business entities can elect to be taxed as S Corp. The S Corp was actually created for the C Corp. We'll get into that here next, because the next question I wanna answer is how it saves you taxes. So how are these business types taxed, right? Because we wanna know, of course, how the S Corp saves taxes. First of all, we have the corporation, okay? You can see on the left, our first column is tax business types. So there's the corporation midway down in red, how is it taxed? The corporation pays a 21% tax rate. And then all the money that you get as an owner and worker in the business will be reported to you on other forms that you'll also pay taxes on. However, with self-employed and partnerships, you can see under the how the business is taxed, these are labeled as pass-through entities. And what that means is the business doesn't pay taxes like the corporation. Instead, all of the income flows through to the owner and is reported for taxes on the owner's return. So it pays taxes based on the owner's situation. It gets combined, the business income for that owner, gets combined with their spouse's income, W-2 jobs, other businesses, other investments, and everything is taxed at the rate for that owner. Now at the bottom, you can see the S Corporation is also listed as a pass-through entity. And the S Corporation was actually created to allow C Corps to be taxed the same way as pass-through entities of self-employed and partnerships. The LLC was a newer legal type of business, and since the IRS was letting them just be taxed as a pass-through, they wanted to give the corporations the ability to be taxed the same way without changing their legal entity structure. Of course, what happened is, it actually can end up saving a bit of taxes from the other pass-through entities of self-employed and partnership. So there are kind of two taxes to consider when you think about taxes generally for you and your business. There's you as the investor, and then there's you as the worker. And in pass-throughs, the LLC, partnership, self-employed, this is kept really simple. You can put money in, take money out. We have ways to account for that in the accounting. It's kept simple. You don't have to do loan paperwork and report interest income for putting money into the business. It's all kept really simple. And when it comes to taxes, you just have your income minus your expenses, and that's what you pay self-employment taxes on and income taxes on. The difference with the S corporation is that you have to pay yourself for working in the business payroll. And on your owner pay, you have two taxes, payroll taxes and income taxes. And so that's the same as our business net income above for pass-throughs because self-employment taxes and payroll taxes are the same. So our owner pay in the S Corp is taxed the same as in the pass-through. The difference, the tax savings difference is any business net income that's left over after our owner pay only has income taxes and doesn't have self-employment or payroll taxes. Okay, so this is the tax savings. So the amount that your business makes above your payroll is where you can save the amount of self-employment taxes. But keep in mind that self-employment taxes go from 15.3% down to 2.9% once you pass the social security threshold for the social security tax, which is 160,200. So once you make over that amount, you're only actually saving a much lower percentage. And we have another thing to consider, which is called the Qualified Business Income Deduction, QBID. This very rare deduction only applies to pass-through income. So you don't get this deduction on your owner's salary. And it's a big deduction because it's 20% of your income. These are all things to really consider 
about your business net income and what your owner salary is. To answer the question, will the S Corp save me money? It really depends on the specifics of your business net income. So your income minus expenses and that owner salary amount. Now I have two tools that will help you with this. First is called an owner compensation calculator for calculating your reasonable compensation amount. This allows you to keep this amount as low as possible to hopefully save the most taxes. In that way, you have what you need for an audit because the lower your payroll, the more taxes you save, the higher risk, of course, you are to be audited. And so you really need to do some non-intuitive steps in order to document this amount. The other spreadsheet I have allows you to compare using my business tax types comparison spreadsheets, what your taxes would be like with your business activity, you know, generally how much does your business make and you need the amount from number one, your reasonable compensation to calculate exactly how much this will save you so that you know if it's worth it or not, because you don't want to elect S Corp status if, if you're not going to save any money and the fines and penalties for making mistakes can eat up any tax savings you have and make the S Corp cost you money as well as the additional steps you have to take and stress. And I'll just show you an example to show you some actual numbers about how this salary amount really changes your taxes. So the way this works, step one is we enter our business income. So in the green, the green cells are where you enter things. Everything else is happens automatically. So the first row here, business income. So you, we're just going to estimate, right? My business income is 300,000 business expenses. Let's say that they were a hundred thousand. You can see this is a self-employed column. So in the self-employed business, that leaves us $200,000 of net business income in the S corp. And the C Corp over here, now we have two columns, right? One for the business and one for the individual. Because remember, I talked about how there's taxes as the owner and there's taxes as you personally working in the business. So what we add in right here is how much we're going to pay you. Let's say that we were going to pay okay, 150000 So now in the S Corp and the C Corp, our business net income is 38525 so this is the amount that we don't pay those self-employment taxes on. So that's where our tax savings come in. So I won't go through this whole spreadsheet, but I'll just show you at the bottom, we can add in that cubit deduction and we can see we're getting 34,000 self-employed, 7,700 in the S Corp. And so what happens is because of that, self-employed saves taxes by a few thousand. However, if we take that cubit away, because it is gonna go away in a few years, then you can see we're only saving very slightly with the S Corp. However, if we change this reasonable compensation number and we bring it down to 100,000, now we are saving like $8,000, right? Now, if I add the cubit in, it's gonna go up. It's gonna be less of a difference, but still about $3,000. And then if we make this amount very low, like $20,000 for our owner salary, then of course we're saving massive amounts of taxes, okay? And that's why, um, this is an area of big interest and of audit. Paying an owner salary can be challenging if you just started your business and you don't have consistent income and you don't want all the extra steps associated with payroll. And some other considerations for not electing S Corp status is if you are moving a lot of assets in and out of your business or if you want to use special allocations because these things are not allowed. And you can also only have one class of stock. And so if you are planning on raising money in other ways, bringing on other owners, those are reasons to not, not elect S Corp status. Okay, that's all for what is the S Corporation and how does it save taxes? And to give you a quick recap, the S Corporation is a tax election. You need to have a separate 
business entity like an LLC or a corporation to make the election to be taxed as what the IRS calls an S corporation. The S corporation saves taxes because you have to pay yourself an owner salary, but the business is a pass through entity. So all of the business information gets taxed on your personal income tax return, but you only pay payroll taxes or self-employment taxes, same thing, on your salary. So if your business is earning significantly more than what a reasonable compensation would be that you need to pay yourself for salary, that amount you'll save payroll or self-employment taxes on. And remember, I showed some spreadsheets and tools for calculating this and check out the free workshop, six biggest mistakes business owners make when trying to save taxes with the S Corp. And at the end of that workshop, I have a special offer to get all of the tools for calculating reasonable compensation, saving taxes with the S Corp um, for a discounted rate for one of my courses. So be sure to check it out if you wanna learn more. Otherwise, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below this video. What is your legal type of business? Have you elected S Corp status? Or what are you debating to elect S Corp? Otherwise, if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel so that you're notified of all the videos I release. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a beautiful day, bye.